This morning, President Trump faces pushback from his own party for refusing to say that he will leave office peacefully if he is defeated in November. The Republican-led Senate unanimously passed a resolution reaffirming its commitment to a peaceful transition. As Ben Tracy reports, the president continues to attack the election process itself, along with his opponent. We love Hispanic Americans. Well. At a rally in Florida last night, there were few masks, but plenty of attacks on the president's opponent, Joe Biden. A lit is when you put out word you're not going to be campaigning today. So he does a lit all the time. I'm working my ass off. With new polls showing President Trump trailing Biden in several swing states, he again suggested he might not accept the outcome of the election. We want to make sure the election is honest, and I'm not sure that it can be. I don't... I don't know that it can be. Even though Vice President Mike Pence insisted in Wisconsin they would, on one condition. We will accept a free and a fair election results. A day earlier, the president would not commit to a peaceful transfer of power. Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that. President Trump, you are not a dictator. On Thursday, Democrats and several Republican leaders put the president on notice. Look, we've had an orderly transfer of power every four years since Washington was selected for a second term in 1792. That will happen again to the winner of the November 3rd election. The president, who was loudly booed at the Supreme Court as he paid his respects to the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, continues to claim mail-in ballots lead to widespread fraud. But his own FBI director testified on Capitol Hill, saying that's simply not true. We have not seen, historically, uh, any kind of coordinated national voter fraud effort uh, in a major election, uh, whether it's by mail or, or otherwise. I will never let the radical left Take away your health care. In North Carolina Thursday, the president unveiled what he calls his vision for health care. But it's really an executive order directing Congress to pass legislation to deal with surprise medical billing. It also makes protecting pre existing conditions official U.S. policy. This is affirmed, signed, and done, so we can put that to rest. But that was actually put to rest 10 years ago by President Obama when he signed the Affordable Care Act, which made covering pre-existing conditions U.S. law. President Trump's order on medical bills also does not carry any legal weight unless Congress fails to pass legislation. In that case, it directs HHS to issue a regulation. Anthony. Ben, thank you.